Finger guns? So bad episode three. <laughs> I came up with this theory that if you put like at least $150 into an, a new online book, okay, and you go find the online casino and you start playing the slots, they let you win right away. It was just this theory of mine. So I put 250 bucks <laughs> into like five or six different <laughs> random online short books. This is when I was dating my ex-girlfriend, who was basically my wife. When she saw what was going on, I was like, listen, babe. Trust me, this is gonna work. <laughs> Trust me, they don't have it rigged. Trust me, we're gonna come out of here. I figured them out. Gussie Picks Cash has for sure figured this out. Yeah, so no then, one else before me has figured this nobody, out. Nobody, not a I soul. I have now figured it out. The first book I remember, I still have the picture in my phone somewhere. This duck machine, and I and I also said to myself, Wait, oh, what did you wait, say? It's duck? a duck machine. Like, it was just like a, you know, a slot like machine. Mario, duck. Mario Duck Hunt, like a random duck. It was just like a random duck, like and a no quack, specific quack duck. duck. Yeah, yeah, like a yellow one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the slot machine. On the slot machine. Okay. It was a duck machine. Yeah. And I hit the wheel. And, and like I said, I, I was convinced this was a real thing. So I was betting heavy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking between 5 and $10 to spin minimum. Brr, brr, brr. I hit for You're like 1100 bucks on this duck machine. Online. Online. Okay? It's my still to this day my biggest slot hit ever besides my ex-girlfriend, who I took to the casino for her 21st birthday. Her first 20 ever in a machine, she hit for five grand. Almost wife. Almost wife. I Where, okay, her. where's the story going? Oh, well, I hit for eleven hundred, and then on the next four online books, I lost it all. And then on the eleven hundred, every morning I would play online roulette for about a week straight, and I eventually got it up to like thirty five hundred dollars. Girl said, told me to cash it out. I said, ain't no pussy. We're gonna turn this in ten grand. Lost it all. End of story. And Don't. you and you broke up with her. And then end I, of story. And then I said, yeah, we this isn't gonna work. All right. Well, DB and Pat, we'll 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 get into the show. The right way, the way the way we do things. It doesn't usually start off like that, but we are. It, but it did. It did. Well, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You're you're a degenerate. We all knew. You, did, you didn't tell us anything we didn't know. And I've got a bunch of stories like that. We're not gonna get into them, but down the road they'll just slowly come on and on. You guys will realize it's it's been a yeah. But so run. typically we get into the platform first. So we talk about the hottest dudes on the platform. Obviously, you guys, um, you you had a good U.S. Open, right? I did. Yeah, I did. You did a great one. Yeah, hey, talk to us about that. Well, I mean, hey, Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, look. What was the number? What was the number, Patrick? Too? What was Bryson the was 22 to 1. 20! I didn't 24. One. I mean, I look, we're trying to hit bets, and uh, so we, we finally yeah. hit one because when Scotty Scheffler and all these, you know, like these shorter numbers hit, it sucks. It's been, it sucked all year long. Yeah. And then we finally hit Bryson. Yeah. So... We, we were we were actually making fun of people who were betting Scotty Scheffler. Yes. Yeah, we're, because why, yeah, because why would you not jump. make fun of anybody? Exactly, betting, like a exactly. Short That's number. what if, I was saying. If you bet Scotty Scheffler last week, I lost all respect for you. Oh, really? well, I didn't do that. Oh, really? No, 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 wait, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Figuratively, look yeah. to your right. <laughs> oh no! Listen, don't tell us that. Listen, because you're a guy who doesn't bet Rory or Chalks. So go ahead and explain don't, to me what the fuck you're about to say. Don't tell us. Let's let's go back before we talk about last week and look at the week before. When I said on the show, Scotty Scheffler is winning the memorial because it is the perfect golf course for him. It's over. It's done. Book it. And what did he do? He won the memorial. And I said, I'm tired of losing units to Scotty freaking Scheffler all year. That's and, I, and I said, so Fair if, I, if you can't beat him, like, I'm not going to just keep wasting my units to, for Scotty to take them all. So what did I do? I parlayed Scotty. For a massive 100-unit play, but I did tell people he was going to win. He did win. I, the parlay nearly hit. We were two Rory McIlroy shots, of nearly course. Nearly. Two big... Rory McIlroy shots away from a 100-unit hit. Yeah, Rory. But I Scotty mean. still won. So, of course, I was going to keep it rolling at the U.S. Open his first Father's Day. But, but tell me this. I've never had fun. Betting the chalked odds on favorite of a major golf. Yeah, you got, that's why you got to parlay. Hey, hey, that's hey, why hey, I parlay. Hey, hey, look, like I, I, we have a buddy at West. We have a buddy Tom. Me and Tom, we love to craft up stories before a sporting event. The best story. And I looked at this board just like you did, and I saw Bryson DeChambeau, the scientist, the live golf guy that everybody hates, the media hates, at twenty four to one, who had two top fives in majors already this year. That's true. That's a hell of a story. I had, I had him at the PGA. And look what happened. And, you, a, and now we're experiencing it yeah. at Live this week. It's a hell of a story. And, and you said, hey, wait a second. I'm getting chills thinking about that, it. Just that, like Bryce was getting chills. 
That seems like a, a smart bet to make. Hey, raise Danny, your hand. this guy R- raise is your hand. pretty good. Raise your hand if you touched the U.S. Open trophy this week. Oh. All of us. Uh, anybody all anybody, anybody else in here? You guys? Anybody, anybody at home touch the trophy? Everybody in there. here. Hey, hey, sorry you for you guys. Wes in the back, uh, he hasn't touched West, the, the raised, trophy. Lloyd, no, thumbs down. Alonzo, have you touched the U.S. Uh, championship trophy? How do you think you're going to touch it when you touch it? Like, are you going to, like... Are you going to touch it with, like, a... a are you going to, like, push it? it? Oh. I'll tell you what I... Come here, baby. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> You're getting real oh, you're close and personal. It. That's kind of weird. You don't even know it like that. You don't even you know don't the trophy know like that. Tro- you don't even know that trophy. But that's the kind of guy Wes is. He'd do that with somebody yeah, he didn't. Yeah. So I did. Fast. I gave it one of these. Like, you know, when somebody's standing in front of you and you, you, you know something that they don't know and you're trying to tell them and you just... Kind of press on them. Uh, yeah, yeah, I gave yeah, it one yeah. of those. Yeah, because yeah, I you didn't, didn't know. I don't you know. You didn't love on it because you were like, "This is not." No, I don't. I, I didn't know love. that. Oh, it's not mine to love. No. It's not mine to love. Yeah. Like I can't. No. Like like I could go to Brock. Yeah. And be like, oh. I mean, I'll you tell you what though. I'll tell you. Build me up. I'll, I'll tell, build tell you what though. I'll tell you what though. Podcast is this? I like that. I will say, I I did touch it like real like. You caressed it. Yeah, but I'm a fucking American. I feel like if you're not American, you can't touch that motherfucker. You can't. You can't touch it like that. You can like. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. You're, <laughs> you're trying to say if you're not American, you can't touch the oh, U.S. Open the trophy. The U.S. Open Championship trophy. That especially when an American wins it. That's all. If you can, you can, you can like look at it. Maybe like do one of these. Like what he was saying, but you can't do it like I did. Like I gave. Oh, so you love. can't caress it, but you can yeah. like just like. Yeah. Tap it with a it like really, a pinky. It's nothing you can against, pinky it. Yeah, it's nothing against the Europeans, but like I know what you motherfuckers did to Brian Harmon. JDC product of the JDC. Mm. You guys didn't. You were talking all that shit to him, so you guys can't touch our trophy. We'll get we'll get into the U.S. Open and the trophy and Bryson and the, this week in a little bit. We got to highlight. We got to give some guys their flowers though, because we've had some hot guys on the platform, and one of them kind of you kind of beef you kind of sent a snarky text to. What up, bro, bro? Right, well, right now, he's number one on the seven-day list. Wow. He hit a plus 750 parlay this week. I don't know if you saw that. I mean, that's... Plus, plus 750, went six and two on the day, hit the plus 750. He was up 11 units on the day. But also sent... You sent him a snarky text. What was the snarky it? text? Something about golfing? Oh, well, that's because everyone likes, you know... When you come at the king, you can't miss. What did he come, bro, what did he bro was coming at I, I literally, I literally don't even remember. Golf match this, golf match that, and I go, bro, bro. We've invited you. We invited this guy out to Nashville. We said, come on out here like three times now. We'll come golf. Come when come was golf. that text? That, I'm pretty sure Brock got home and was a little bit buzzing. Oh, yeah, I was. And no, thought was, there was a situation uh, going on that wasn't well, going like on. Oh, Pat, Pat does that. And Pat does that. I do that all the time. And everyone yeah. was just a little yeah. bit. Oh, dude, Pat does that all the time. Yeah. Pat will start a sucks. fight or he'll, he will not start a fight. Well, <laughs> he thinks he's in a fight that doesn't exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, yep. he will actually start a fight that he thinks has already started, but he just started it when he... Classic. Does that makes sense. He does yeah, that yeah. all the time. I, I don't. Like, I can't, literally, no I one not disagree he, with what they're saying. I, 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 no, I have to say because I, I like to just kind of like I want to just basically I'm in a room. I just want to drop something in there that just pisses everybody off, and I just want to see like six people just getting mad for no reason, and it's because I. So you like throw a grenade out there? Yeah, 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 yeah. So pretty like much, the, pretty much, what happened was we sent a picture of us and Bryson and the trophy and in the big Sobek group chat. And what a brother responded and was like, absolute legend, like, so sick. I got to get down to Nashville. And I was like, come down, like, play some golf. And then Gutsy just <laughs> injects and goes, we've given you a fucking chance to come, man. We've invited you, like, six times and you won't come. And everyone was just like, what? Yo, There's always right that now. guy, though, on a group text where, like, that shit happens. Because you're like, no, no, literally, like everything's next- all calm and shit and everybody's good. And then all of a sudden, somebody just... They don't know the context of what's happening, and then it's like it was like 16 minutes, and then somebody was like, "Bang, Brewers scored." <laughs> <laughs> How about those Braves, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, bro, bro's hot right now, and Good then job, uh, bro, bro. I mean, I feel like we've been talking about this guy too much, but Hobby, Hobby's just been the hottest guy in baseball over the last 30 days. Had another six and two day on Tuesday. The guy's just making it rain. Shout out Hobby. I know, I know he watches this every week. Shout out Hobby. He's been a huge. Uh, Huge Sobek guy over the years and obviously sick at baseball. And lastly, I got a guy we haven't given flowers to on the show. Wes is going to love this one oh. because it's a guy that... Wes uh, loves this guy. In, in the most nice way... Wake up, Wes. In the most nice way, it's a guy that blows me up more than I think anybody. My phone. In the most nice way. And his name is Dusty Picks on Sobek. He's on all three leaderboards right now. He's number seven on the seven day. Eight on the... Th- eight. Sorry. 
Seven on the 24 hour, eight on the seven day, three on the 30 day. He's just been winning. He wins. Um, what do you got? But I mean, Dusty, you blow me up at crazy times, buddy. He'll, he'll be celebrating a fucking tennis bet and letting me know that he won at like 8.50 a.m. Just make sure. 8.50, make sure I'm like getting knows. out of the shower and he's like, woo wee, woo wee. <laughs> cash, cash the bet in fucking Spain. <laughs> Dude, I'm dead, I'm dead serious too. And I'm like, I'm happy for him. And then shout out, hey, shout out to Gutsy actually. Oh. Gutsy put out internally here a third round leader Bryson bet that we got at 550. Wow. 550. That's disgusting. So we hit that and then I put five units on it Sunday when he was at minus 130. We had a big weekend. We had ourselves a big weekend, and we celebrated on Sunday night. We did. We golfed. We saw Bryson win. It poured rain on us, and we went to Halls. We had a nice sit-down meal. Thank you, Bryson. We shook oh, your hand we this did. week. Yes, me and Bryce. We did go to Halls. That's Wonderful funny. stuff. Shout out, Bryce. All right. Anyways. But we got you guys in town. Bryce is listening to music or something right now. Bryce is like, we got he looks, he's, he's listening to us. No, he's not. I don't know. Are you? <laughs> he wants you to think he is. He's not. What is Bryce listening <laughs> he's to? He's listening to the Hawk Tua song. Yeah. Are you? I, I, I feel over. like Bryce I is. I can't believe Coop was the first one to say it. He's, I was, li- he's listening dude, to the Hawk Tua song. I was holding it in so bad. Oh, I, I wanted to say were. it earlier today or earlier on the show. What are you holding in? The, I wanted to. I was going to do the Hawk Tua, but. I like w- the actual. But I wanted to see who said it first, and you were the big underdog to say it yeah, first because you hate yeah, it Yeah, so because much. you hate it. But then you said it first. So cash if you had Coop yeah. saying Huck Tula first, and we're not gonna say it again. I'm, I will. I'm no, not, now that the seal is broken, it's it's happening. Well, you guys in town, shout out you guys for all the live hookups coming up here. Um, yeah, fun. yeah. First and foremost, thank you guys. Yeah, we've had an insane two days. We have three days left, which is fucking even more insane. Cool. Let's go back to the beginning though. Like we, what we like to do with guests on this podcast, especially the the creators on Sobet, um, is we like to give users, listeners, anybody tuning in, kind of insights into like who you guys are as people. Because the coolest thing about Sobet is we have guys who come from all over the fucking spectrum. I don't know if you listened to Deepak last week. He owns a barber shop. He owns a nail salon. He's he lives crystal in, jail. He lives you in got Omaha. crystal jail. It's crazy, bro. Oh, that like, sounds way more interesting than us. Oh, it, it, it is for sure. Yeah. It is for sure. Oh. <laughs> it is for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> but how can you? Why don't you go through the the TJ story? Kind of maybe give the your background. Story. Yeah, the origin story of TJ. All right. Uh, me and Pat met. We were working at a bank. We were working a cold white collar job. Yeah. What bank? Nice. First Citizens Bank. Nice. I mean, reputable bank. Yeah, and we were water cooler sure, talking. Yeah, this sounds like a bank. Wait that... a sec. Gutsy saying it's not a reputable bank. Oh, I think they're on the same level as Wells Fargo. I ditched Wells Fargo. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wells Fargo. 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 Oh, yeah, he was in Wales, not where we were. But I, I 100% set up fake yeah. accounts for dead grandparents yeah. all the time. But then I moved to First Citizens, met Pat. We, we started, uh, it was 2015 when DraftKings DFS started for golf. We were water cooler talking, you know, golf picks. And, and this is 2015. I mean, you guys were probably prepubescent. No, I was playing DraftKings. I was playing DraftKings. And – were you? Yeah, in college. I was graduating that's when high school. I started, that's when I started seeing. So, you know, it, and long story short, man, we just kept no talking shot. about it every – we just kept talking about it every week, and, and one day Pat was like, we should do a – there's not a podcast about this. We should do a podcast. And I was like, well, how do you do a podcast? And back then, like, nobody knew how to do a podcast. I will tell you one funny thing that we did, because I didn't know how to record. We didn't have any of this equipment. You couldn't go on Amazon and buy, like, a podcast kit. So – there was an app in the app store that was nine ninety nine called Tape a Call. Yeah. And it was literally like Tape a Call. You spot, you know, you want to get some some dirt on somebody or blackmail your you, you girl, you tape a call. <laughs> and so I was like, that, this is how we're going to do this. This is how we're going to record. So I, so I downloaded Tape a Call. This is the other thing that's crazy. Again, this was 2015. This is way before the podcast boom, right? Yeah. So we're like, oh, we got to figure out how to do this, and we got to figure out who's going to be the host, and we got to put all this time and effort into it. Like, now I feel like most people just like turn on the microphone and go. But we, for 12 weeks, I, I talked to my wife. I'll never forget my wife looking at me cross eyed, like, you want to do what? And I'm like, okay, me and my friend at the bank want to talk about fantasy golf. <laughs> Every my, Monday my night, who you don't big, even, trust my me. friend who you don't even know, yeah, who trust you, me, it's gonna be huge. Who, who you don't even know, we want to talk about it 
uh, and, and but we're gonna record it on this app I have, and but we're not gonna let anybody hear it for a while. And she's like, oh, okay. And I was like, yeah, we're not gonna let anybody hear it because we gotta figure it out. Yeah. We're gonna so tape for, our calls. So for twelve weeks, we <laughs> we literally practiced a podcast for twelve weeks. Figure out like who was hosting, what what kind of segments we we're gonna do for twelve weeks. No way. We would go up. I would go upstairs on a Monday night, record an hour and a half. Then this. Fucking go to the app. bathroom, look in the mirror. You fucking suck, DB. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, uh, I think this, that was, more, that sound was like more me. Idiot. You sound like an this idiot. Show. This <laughs> terrible app, we would do this. And, y'all, I'm not even kidding. This sounds so stupid just saying this. I would download the thing, go in GarageBand, edit it, just so that <laughs> me and Pat could listen to it and, like, determine what we thought about it, right? Well, the, the app would fail constantly. Yeah. So for 12 weeks, there was like four weeks where we would get done, and I w- and we'd finally be done with the hour long show, and I'd go to download it, and the it, the thing would crash, and I would call Pat, and we would literally do it again, again, <laughs> again. Guys, we again. were we were we again. were idiots. Again. <laughs> we were idiots. We would again. record it again. <laughs> like imagine breaking down the JDC again, like for another hour after you just no, did got it, you wouldn't so that no one thing. would listen to it. <laughs> So God, finally, finally, after like twelve weeks, we 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 let like a few of our friends. I got the file and I like literally emailed it to friends and was like, "Listen to this and tell me what you think." And they were like, "Oh, this is cool, whatever." We we published <laughs> the first one in September of twenty fifteen, and we then we were off and running. Did you did you put it on Spotify? Like, what was the initial Spotify? Distribu- was just it? I Twitter? don't even know. If Spotify was a thing. Like, what was your initial distribution? No, it was only strategy. Apple Podcasts. That's yeah. it. Oh wow! So you were just putting we didn't it even out. start doing YouTube till which is dumb. Yeah. Looking back, we, we we didn't start doing YouTube till 2019. Oh wow! We only we were audio only until 2019. So you were just going off of Apple Podcasts, Apple, and then yeah. when did the whole like social game start for you guys? Well, we started Twitter right away because the golf world was on Twitter. So yeah, we started yeah. Twitter right away, right away, and did that, and then Instagram. I don't really know when we started doing Instagram. Like Instagram a couple was years like, later, yeah, two years couple, later. Yeah, um, yeah, but Twitter right away. Do you have any? Do you have any moments that you look back on? And you're like, that was a massive turning point, or like we did something, like we met somebody, or like had an interview that it was like we made it. Yeah, I think. I mean, like the, the funny thing was like we like one of our biggest things when we first started was the interviews. Like we we did, um, you know, we obviously we were talking about betting on golf and fantasy golf and whatever. But one of the first things was all about our interviews. So uh, we had good relationships with players, and that's that's really what kind of helped us, like, I guess get a little more established. So uh, what, what was funny was one of our first interviews was in my dad's office, like in downtown oh, right. Augusta, Georgia, in this old-ass conference room with – Scott Brown, who was uh, – he's a great – No one's ever heard of. Yeah, nobody's ever heard of him. Great guy from, from, from Aiken, South Carolina. He's good friends with kids. But he was – he was like, at that time, he was a full-on yeah. tour player. Oh, cool. And um, so we, we interviewed him in, in my dad's office. And it's like you have – you know, my dad's a CPA. All right, so look. <laughs> you're in a – you're in a – you're in a like An there's like wood CPA everywhere in, in encyclopedias and stuff and you're like <laughs> you're feeling like like things are like it, it was just a weird setting to do a golf interview. I, I have a great story. Our our most memorable first interview was Stephen Bowditch. You wanna say anything about Stephen Bowditch? No. Okay. I don't even know who that the, is. He was an Australian and this is how sounds, we, he sounds Australian. This is how this went down. Stephen This Bowditch. is how this went down in twenty in twenty, now in the off. beginning of twenty sixteen, <laughs> he was a three time PJ Tour winner. Okay, he, when he came up out of Australia, he came up with like Adam Scott, Jason Day, and yeah. people in Australia thought this Great guy player. was going to be the next Greg Norman. Like they, he was a stud, right. won three times on tour. Right in early twenty sixteen, his game is starting to crumble. He's shooting eighties in tournaments. It's bad. Like he's he's off the reservation bat. We are doing a pre Masters like look ahead show in February, and Pat unloads on the show and at this time we, we are literally like six months old we don't even yeah, we, there we, are a hundred we don't people think listening anybody's to us. listening to yeah. us yeah and pat's like this steven bodish guy's in the field he's the worst he's trash he can't break 80 and he goes the, the master should rescind his invitation he shouldn't even be in the field i think i said also um he makes me want to throw up in my mouth you did say that oh man yeah. So we think nothing. Yeah, it's just bad. That's a bad that's saying. Bad. Like we, we say that. Him. Like that's we think that's like you actually hate. Him. We think yeah, you like hate that guy. Yeah. We think nothing of he it. He threw golf balls through your window. We think nothing. No, he's a great guy. But anyway, we, we think <laughs> nothing marked, of they're it. They're marked with his marker. And <laughs> all of a sudden, 
the next like day or two, we get a DM from Valdo, and he goes, "Boys, uh, thanks for the shout out on the show, but it is really hard to practice these days with Pat's foot up my ass." And I was like, and at this time, we had never really had any interaction with, like, players. So, yeah. I didn't know if this was, like, really him or if this was some fake account. So, we messaged Kiz. I, I think it was Kevin Kisner. We messaged Kiz, and we're like, hey, is this account on Twitter? Is this the real Stephen Bowditch? And he's like, yeah, that's him. He's an Aussie. He's cool as hell. He's, he's messing around with you guys. And we were like, no way. So, I reach out to him, and I go, Baldo, we want to do a public apology on the show. Pat's going to publicly apologize if you'll come on. And he goes, I'm in, Sunday before the Masters. Oh. We go to a we – we, so me and Pat go to the drive, chip, and putt Sunday before the Masters yeah. in 2016. We meet him on the – Pat meets him face-to-face. <laughs> Bowdo's cool as hell. He's cool as hell, okay? He's an Aussie. You guys know, like, if you know any Aussies, like, they don't get offended over anything. But we didn't really know, and we were a little timid, right? So we meet him. We interview him that day, and Pat writes – an amazing, like, Pat, ha- Pat has a way with word, like, written words when he takes time to do it. He writes an apology to Baldo. I put it over um, Boys to Men on Bended Knee <laughs> audio. <laughs> I forgot about that. And, and he reads this apology, and it is oh my beautiful, God. And, and it was magic. And Baldo was like, boys, I love you guys. He's like, this, <laughs> yeah. he's like, this is great. You're f- all is forgiven. And we end up being great friends with him and eventually turns into me caddying for Baldo for two holes during round two of the Players' Championship in 2016. I caddied for him. Like, he turned out to be one of our best friends, but it started because Pat shit all over him. Wait, why did you caddy for two holes? So they ha- they got yeah, called that's off. A good, that, that's a good question. The, like, like how that the players' no, championship. The players' championship. The players championship. So it was a Friday. I was there for Thursday, Friday. My wife and I were there for Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Play Thursday, play Friday. They get called off the course for a thunderstorm, and and uh, Baldo had two holes left to play. He was like nine shots from making the cut because he was broken. I mean, I'm telling you, like the guy's game was broken. He ended up being done. Like he's out of golf. Yeah, he's Crazy. still done. So he 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 was like nine I'm shots sick. away from making the cut. Is your foot still up his ass? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess it is. He's like Pat. I know I'm not playing. Did golf, I end his career? You might. I know I'm not me. playing golf. I didn't realize I ended his career. I know I'm not playing golf anymore because you pull your so, foot out of my. I don't think I ended his. So career. he's <laughs> nine <laughs> shots from making the cut, but listen, admirable move on his part because a lot of guys would just bail and be gone. But I'm having beers with him that Friday night, and I said, "Hey, where's your caddy?" And he goes, "Well, he's he went home. He's like on the way to Orlando right now." And I was like, "Well, who's caddying for you tomorrow?" Just gave up on he got called off the course because of the thunderstorm. He had he had eight and nine. He's like, All right, left I'm to out. Play. Yeah, yeah, you suck, dude. He goes, his daughter's graduating. He just left, and I said, "Well, who's carrying the bag for you tomorrow?" He's like, "I think my coach is just gonna do it. It's two holes. I'm you know I'm missing the cut. Like, there's no point." And I was like, "Bro, can I caddy for you?" He's like, "You want to?" And I go, "Yeah, yeah, I want to." And so the next morning, he picks me up, go in, go into player uh, player parking lot. Never done it before. Like, put on the caddy bib. Walk out to number eight, which is like a 245-yard par three. Uh, hello, how you doing? He's like, Good hey, morning. we're on one. Yeah, eight is, and, a, eight, uh, eight, eight is a tough hole. <laughs> and we end up – so I caddy from those two holes. He helps me smuggle the – um the I, we're on nine, and I was like, Valdo, I have to have this caddy bib. Like, you have to figure out I – I have to take this home with me. It's like the player's championship. It's got his name on it. He's like, oh, yeah, we got this. He's like, shove it in the bag as soon as we're done. So I shove it in the bag. He goes, if they ask you about it, you say – that I think his, his caddy's name was, like, Neil or something. He's like, you tell him Neil took it home with him, and you're filling in. I was like, done. <laughs> so that's what we did, and I have that thing mounted. That's that's what's like, behind wait, me. What? You were just out there with no caddy bill? No, no, yeah. no, no. No, I had it on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what's behind me in the Golf Gurus and Gamblers show over my head is Baldo's bib from oh, the players. But I did crazy. it for, I mean, it was two holes. But he turned into one of our best friends. It was awesome. That's well, fucking I, wild. I think uh, one thing that's important, too, like what you were saying earlier, like, when when DB and I started the podcast, we like we never knew like it would turn into anything special or whatever. But you know when you you have like a, a passion for, for what you do, it's like guy like guys like you like you know talking about sports or whatever and all the the content creators that y'all have for you. Like DB and I, like we just we enjoy talking about golf, and um, that's what that's what made it special. Like it was it was not anything. There was no magic to it. But the best thing was, is, like, DB and I, like, literally work so hard at it, like, just back and forth trying to figure out, like, who was good at what, 
and whatever it was, like, that was, like, the best part. And it was, like, not only did we, like, we do a whole entire podcast and then redo it because the damn yeah. tape of call sucked so bad. <laughs> that was how passionate we were with golf. <laughs> And it, that's what, you know, that's what kind of worked for us. So, so how did the tape of call work? You called somebody's number and it just taped the call? I would call Pat. I, then I'd have to open up yeah. the app, hit record. It would and record just, the you file. you talking on the phone. And it would just be us talking on the phone, record the file. Then I would transfer it to garage to my computer and then edit it on GarageBand. Yeah. <laughs> and it would do some that's screwed insane. up shit if we never, if like, if it didn't work, like, you were like, oh, shit. This. And we no, didn't I mean, know until we were done. No, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You wouldn't know that it, that yeah. it did not but I think, like, you guys have come such a far away, even, f like, obviously, since think that. We have. But, like, the coolest part, when when you guys joined the, sh the platform and everything, like, uh, it was a huge win for us. But it was cool just seeing everything that you guys have built, like, come to fruition in the past couple of years. Just, just, just from being, like, around you guys and having you guys on the platform. Like, you going on Pat McAfee's show, fucking insane. Like, I remember when that first morning, I think it was, uh, what, was it the Masters last year? No, it was uh, U.S. Open last US year. U.S. Open last year. But I remember everybody, like, all the SoBed employees. Bro, like, all the SoBed employees were talking about it in the Slack, watching the show live. Like, DB's coming on. Like, DB's coming on. Like, that was a wild moment for me, but just being like, yo, this guy who's on SoBed is on the fucking U.S. Pat McAfee. He's on ESPN right yeah. now. Like, that was insane. That was but, awesome. it, but I mean, obviously, a, a testament to you guys and the work that you've done. But I'd never been to an event with you guys. You guys have had the, the PGA deal for a couple of years now. But the live the live event this week, like the past two days, media day, and then uh, today the the pro am, you guys playing in the pro am. But just seeing like you guys interact with people on the range, all the caddies that you guys know, the way guys like respect you guys and come up to you guys, like you're fucking boys for life. Like it's just cool seeing that, like that you guys are so ingrained in the golf game, like even beyond just the PJ Tour or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's been a really cool week just seeing that. Yeah, and, it's I, been fun. and I think like playing with Kessler at Troubadour and just like him coming out, like acting like he's a bro, like one of the boys. He's he's Patrick Reed's caddy, by the way. The, the caddies, the caddies love love us, man, because and it's not it's not because of us, but it's because we we were the first ones to like kind of give them attention. Because in 2015 we started doing the player interview thing, but then we were like, man, if we're doing gambling, like we need to talk to the caddies because yeah. the players will tell you one thing. And that ain't necessarily what's real. Mm -hmm. So we started reaching out to caddies, and then caddies would, you know, you have one or two on, and then, you know, it, it snowballs. And I think I think we were one of the first shows. I mean, now, you know, plenty of guys, like bar, I mean, Barstool talked to caddies or whatever. You see do, do you think the over. player thing's shifting? Like, players are getting more open to Oh, it definitely about it? shifted. And that's really why, yeah, yeah, it's definitely. They're, well, they're, I think it shifts more, too, like, when you talk about live. Like, just live has shifted things more in a, in yeah. a positive way of, like, just bringing, like, more openness yeah. to, like, let's talk about it. Well, and also, like, golf's kind of the perfect sport to do it with because, like, you can't affect the game that much as a player, right? Like, you're betting on people to win, right? So, like, guys aren't just going to, like, hit bat. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if they're playing to win, like, they're playing their hardest every time, hitting the best shots every time. So, it's, like, it's different in, like, football where it's, like, they can catch a pass or, like, drop a pass on perfect on purpose and it affects the line a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, in golf, it's, like, dude, you're playing to win. So, it's, like, you're betting on, like, a 22-to-1 favorite or whatever. Like, he, he, he's trying to win. Like, well, I think one of the things about golf, too, is, like, I mean, golf in general, like, I mean, you go, you go back – hundred years. I mean, golf has always been a gambling sport. For sure. I mean, it's always been a gambling sport. So, when you think about it, like, you know, like the NFL play, like, if you talk to an NFL player or whatever, they're always kind of, like, a little bit more reserved to talk about gambling. But in general, golf, like, golf the golfer gambling. mentality yeah. is... Yeah, golfers gambling. Oh, the golf, sure. The golfer mentality is gambling, right? So, like, it, it really is... Um, I think it's a little more natural. So like it, now it's 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 becoming a little bit more acceptable, right? Not for the players; they can't sit there and you know tell you their you know, who who to pick or whatever. But the thing is, is I think that's what makes golf so good when it like with a, like a kind of natural match with gambling. Yeah, it's because it's just always been that way. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah, and it's like that's what I'm saying. It's always somebody trying to do their best. Yeah. Like like you're never gonna try to like do bad in golf. You're trying to get it in the hole. Yeah. Um. The pro am. Oh. Huh. 
I mean, shout out John. Shout out John Catlin. John Catlin. John what Catlin. a guy. What a man. For, I mean, for the listeners, so these guys today played in the in the Live Pro Am. They got paired with this guy, John Catlin, who's been grinding out on the Asian tour, European tour a little bit, I think. I, DP, DP and World. DP and Asian Tour, yeah. Asian he's, a, tour. he's a winner. He's number won, one he's on won. the Asian Tour right now, I think. Or Legend. something. Yeah, like he's won like six or seven events, he's I think. Se- I think seven or eight worldwide yeah. between DP and Asian Tour. Yeah. But he went out there today and shot a seven under. I mean, this guy was dialed. And, and we were cracking jokes. I mean, you guys can talk more about it. You, you guys played with him. And he, gave, he was giving you advice oh, here and he, there. Yeah, he's my new coach. <laughs> he's coach. I've already t- I've already messaged him. Hey, thanks, coach. Uh, he's he's my guy. I was a little surprised at how early you messaged him on Instagram. Like, I, I figure like you'd give him nah, a little man, bit of a that break. Is kinda, that is kind of weird. No, yeah, no, no, like, no, no very yeah, early. Overbearing. That's an overbearing. Not with the connection that we had. He literally said, "You got to play it cool." He lit. I, no, I, You're I, like, I, well, you give him a couple days. You know what I mean? I you mean a hot girl? He gave him no time. Like literally, we were leaving the grounds, and he was like, "All right, I need a message." Listen, my coach. No, it's like when you my beat coach, it. if it was John Rom, then I would definitely slow play, play it. John cool. Callen, not so much. No offense, John. He wait, knows. wait, wait. What are you saying? So you're gonna big time John Rom and not follow him back right away? But also, also, <laughs> the guy literally said this was John the Rom most, followed you. He said this was the most fun I've ever had in a pro am group. You guys have been awesome. Okay, and when he said that, and I and I. I made him verify. I said, are you serious? Like, are you telling me the truth right now? I was like, yes, because he played in hundreds of pro-ams. So I was just like, yeah, we're going to go ahead and make this connection now. Strike while the iron's hot. We're, we're going to be cheering him on tomorrow from the, st- from the stands. He's going to know. Like, we're going to connect. It's over. We had the Hawk Tua connection. He's already sent us a video, <laughs> like so that. you can make fun. He, he'd love you, you can make fun of it, but he, he but he was the first the one. He slid in the DMs. He was the first one to slide in the DMs and send me a, another Hakua meme. So I don't want to hear it. He loves it. He freaking yeah. loves it. He's, yeah. First, <laughs> I don't know. There's a. I have no. I, I'm. I'm. I'm interesting. I, I'm, what was it? What was the moment of the pro am? Him. Him hitting the 65 foot butt. Oh, no, that I mean, sucked. Well, for you, Cost for us, for us, that was incredible. Place. For me, that was actually a moment. I, I thought that was a that was a special moment. It me. really was. Yeah. Uh, it was cool. Tell it. Tell what happened. Tell what happened. All right. So we we do. So first off, we. Uh, I mean, look these these players. Look, it goes back to the old gambling theme. He's like, all right. So Sucker we're gonna bustled the hell out of us. Yeah, he did. He's like, all right. What's like hundred dollars? Hundred dollars in the hole, and uh, we do it on a hole and whatever. Everybody fails but then we go to the next no one. one understands what you're talking about right now you've not explained this well at all okay well you go you explain it then <laughs> he just go, gives up on it yeah you, I, the pressure's on you the to game, the, the game <laughs> yeah. is uh we're gonna hit like a putt from the back of the green to the front of the green so it's gonna be a long ass putt if you make it everybody else the, the other two guys give you a hundred bucks if everybody misses we move on that's the game He's, he's I didn't stepped, have enough time to explain that, but yeah, ahead. he was taking the scenic he route. Stepped he stepped up. I was taking he the was scenic route. He was definitely taking the scenic route. He passed the exit like Coop did on the way here. He he he. I was on the Jersey Turnpike just he, trying to flip so he around. Just caught anyway, it straight. He drops the just ball. Just straight. He drops the ball on the green and sinks the putt on the first try, like right off the bat. And then me and Pat pay him a hundred dollars. The end. It sucked. I wish I got involved. That, in that. is the worst storytelling I've yeah, ever heard. You were on the receiving end, but it was incredible. Yeah. Him just stepping up there and it nailing the sixty-five foot putt was insane. I think Everyone what was, more, what was golf cart stopped and we're like, yo, whoa. I like, think what's more impressive is how he turned my game around today. He because did. I was, I was dangling. DB off a cliff. was lost. I was. Is that what we're gonna call it? Is that your game's fixed now. Did you watch the end of the <laughs> round, Gussie? Oh, one, see, see, see how deep DB takes one shot and turns it into the end. Like, he, DB will literally, he does this in the memory guess. He takes one shot and it turns out to be the entire narrative for all that happened. He could have, he could have hit 18 tops off of every tee. Oh, uh, don't tell, no, I'm not the topper off the tee. That is you. That is you. You topped it off T1. Oh, no, I, that was a skull. Yes. A skull. No, it was not a top. No, you shanked a driver. Sorry, that was a shank, not a top. But anyway, DB could take it, like, he could do it on 17 holes. Hey, I think one but shot. But on the 18th hole, he hits it 400 yards, and he's like, <laughs> I did that all day. Back. And he literally will say that. Back. Hey, I did that all day. I think one shot can make it round. Dude, also, you're also forgetting the bunker I think one shot. shot I can make around. The bunker shot on 17 that John Callen was like, that was a pro shot. 
Well, you well, fucking you out. It. That was such a lucky you shot. Stuck it to 20 inches. Of course it was a good shot. It First was off, world, that was a shot. down slope, back of the bunker, hey. no green to work with. Nipper. It was, it was almost Nipper. as good. It was almost as good as my I bunker shot. I saw shots. that. DB literally looked into that. And I guarantee no, you, no, I did not. not John Catlin lit what up shot? like a Christmas tree On when 17? I hit that shot. That yes. was the luckiest shot you've ever you hit in your attention. life. You were catching <laughs> shade, probably. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't paying attention. He was catching shade somewhere. I probably somewhere. wasn't. You were. Was him him and Ryan were fucking sitting under Ryan, the Ryan, you didn't see it either. Tree. Wait, what? They were oh, that was sixteen. That was sixteen. Let me tell you something. I was sixteen. I was, was, I was I was sitting on the I was sitting on my phone. Let me tell you something. <laughs> there was not anybody more surprised that DB hit that shot than DB himself. <laughs> there was not anybody, and I guarantee he would have been. I, that, I, that, um, that could be true. That hey, I think true. I think one shot can make a round. Wayne Gretzky saw me make a birdie putt. Well, Wayne, I do. Dude, agree that with was that. awesome. In that Celtics, made my round. In the Celtics. Jersey. Also, real quick, yeah, same hole. Saying. Same hole. Eight. Eight rated out of ten bunker yeah, rankings that's true. for me. That's according true. to a oh on the bunker, bunker shot bunker that I hit, that, I, w- I would have loved to, but no, I raked. It was the, the rake job oh, that nice. yeah. it was the rake job that you did on the shot that John Callen told me was a pro shot. Yes, exactly. That one, and yeah, then it was raked. a pro rake. So. Yeah, I didn't have yeah, to hit kinda, a bunker yeah. shot because I was uh, I hit it by. So you should be a pro golf player multiple times, and you should you should be a pro groundsman. Um. Yeah, DB should be a pro golf player, and Gutsy should be a pro groundsman. Uh, groundsman you mean a caddy? Though, they drive no, shit. I'd uh, rather be a caddy. Like, so you guys got out here on Tuesday. We met you at Troubadour. Mm. Unbelievable experience. God, I love Troubadour, man. The, I mean, one That's of the greatest place, places man. in the world. Troubadour and if you the don't hot know, to a girl right now are just in my top two. Yeah, if you don't know what yeah, Troubadour is, bad top two. hate to say it, but you probably can't afford it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Hey, if you don't know what it is, you probably can't afford uh, it. When Gutsy, I can't even afford it, but when, I don't when know Gutsy, uh passes away his uh, ashes will be on Troubadour. I will tell you that right oh, now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's got these playground. Oh, but yeah. we, we go God, out there. God bless you. I hope you don't pass away soon. Same. No, it's okay. <laughs> but we go out there to play around. Had an unbelievable day. Troubadour, no rules. I wore a Celtics jersey. It was the night after the Celtics won. Had the guns the, out. Had the, well, had the I didn't bring out. any guns. You had the guns out. Oh, these two. Yeah. <laughs> the white guns. So some the white, white guns. They, were, they were some white, white. guns. Some white pythons. Um, in the out. Celtics jersey though, hole four. I I mean I played horrible. Four. Played absolutely you horrible. Did. You played fine. You played I, fine. I hit a couple good shots here and there. You struggle with the wedge. Oh uh, my wedge god! I want to fucking break my wedge. Okay, let let him tell us the good sorry. story. Right, tell us right. good story. Like Cleveland fifty four. Like I want to fucking today. break it. Like what John kept doing today during the round. She guys knows what John kept doing. No. DB would like. Listen. Are you shitting on John after we Wait, just? Yeah, no, I would just say this. Like I actually no, I chirped John about this. I chirped John about this. DB would hit a ball that's clearly going to miss the green, and John would be like, oh, hold up. That might be a little bit left. Oh, no, that's not the green. And he did that <laughs> he like was 15 that. times. He, he kept was doing it. That. And I, bet, I was like, John, you, you keep that. bullshitting with these guys. Like, we all don't know. That ball's not going to stay and on the green. He also say that when it, like, when he almost hit a house. Oh, that almost might hit a house. <laughs> Dude, oh, wait. <laughs> It's hey, saying, it's that, saying uh, it hit a road. Oh. That only happened one time. That was, or, that was or one time. He, he DB, did it a couple DB's times. up, and DB hits his, like, famous one snap hook off the tee. Yeah. And, of course, Coop's back there like, oh, that's a great shot, bud. They're not even Thank knowing you. where the ball went at all. And, and the, this yeah. ball is fucking Kim's already like, out of Oh, bounds. that's a great shot. <laughs> that and the, the ball is left it's of left. Off the block. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was on, that's I was on, I was on FaceTime. Oh, imagine. that's a great <laughs> shot off the planet. <laughs> I was on FaceTime, and I went, that looks really nice. <laughs> and, and somebody on the call goes, that does not look nice. <laughs> this This has me concerned. That there's a plot to make TB look good, because y'all are like, if he was like pulling one way left, <laughs> and you're like, you're like making that sound. That like, looks, oh, this really looks nice. like a really nice shot. His, I'm trying his to talk about making the putt in front of Gretzky. I'm not trying to make this about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's what happens though. And I'm just, I just was saying we can't let John get away with it. Shout out John, but he cradles everybody like a baby, and he needs to give he it does. straight. Catlin? He does. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Like, there's even a couple I, shots I will say, had. I didn't notice that. Did he help me out? There, no, there was just a couple shots that you had where he'd be like, oh, that might hold, be okay. Hold on. And, and it, just, it, it just didn't. Hold on. Before, okay. before we do move on, Pat's been shitting on me, duck hooking it and hitting I a will, house. I should have. But we got to talk about Kelly James rapping at the par three. And yes. As, and when that Pat, was good. on Who's a par that? three, when Pat oh. hits the ball oh my God, did you miss and that? Kelly Who's James that? goes, I didn't know he's going to lay up on a par three because Pat hit. 
a queefer out there. I did, that got I did. Halfway I, to the hole, and is, Kelly James cooked him. Who's and it Kelly was James? Amazing. He's like the uh, DJ. He's like an. What is he? A freestyle rapper? Is it freestyle and he, rapper? He, was just like on the he stands on the he stands on the T. He's got a guy that does a beat. It's an insane. And he he's got he did got a, a really good it. job today. And he got me because I like he's Here's right. Like right here. Let's roll. Here we go. I'm talking double P. That's not Pat Perez. That's Pat Perry. Woo! Mr. Georgia, Mr. Legendary. You grew up with Chucky Three Sticks. Let's see. He topping the bump and brunt shy. <laughs> UGA go dogs, my dog. Uh, and you know it's true. I'm talking to a junkies. Yeah, we are all you. Can you hit a little 173? A little over the top. Now will we? You know that's in the bunker on the left, but it's okay. Did you really lay up here today on a par three? But it's all right, though. All right, we just need a smooth swing, though. No. Also, that guy so makes sick. so much money. Well, yeah, he's working yeah, for Liv. doing that. No, 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 no. no, no. no. He's <laughs> been doing that on the PJ Tour no. for years. And uh -huh. they hire his ass for PJ Tour events, like every PJ Tour event, but also private parties. The players hire him. The 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 big shot that's CEOs crazy, hire him. Dude, Look, that's a crazy guys, niche. If you follow him on Instagram, like he is flying around private everywhere he mm -hmm. goes, and that is what he's doing. That's that's how he's made his money. That's and the craziest niche of all time. Bread left and awesome. right by doing that. Yeah, I first saw him six years ago in a he's just a, video. He's just a freestyle rapper for golfers. Yeah, yeah. that's a crazy like, niche. I mean, they probably played him, paid him what. 50 grand. I don't know. Should we get back to the Gretzky story? <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember where I was. Uh, hole two. Number four. No, number two. Was it four? It's hole two. Yeah, so we, no, no, no. We were coming down four. We were coming down four. four. We all had pretty good drives, I remember. Also, four. also yes. It was Sorry. four, but was also four. Coop's third shot airmailed the green. Well, I was going to tell that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I was going to tell we, we all had pretty good drives, but we played your ball. I think you hit it like probably like 300. Hit a really good oh, drive. At least, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hit a really good drive. <laughs> My my second shot, I I took the burner out. Gutsy taught me how to hit the burner this week. I haven't ever hit a good shot with it. Laced it about like two twenty next to the green. I was right near you. Yep. Scold my wedge. Just boned it. Just scold it into, into the bushes. Right behind the green, there was some landscaping, some pine straw, some Shrubbery. bushes. It went, I didn't it, even know where you were. He went disappeared. Straight, he disappeared. So he went straight into a bush, yeah. and then on the back side there was a hill with pine straw, and it was just sitting in the pine straw. So it wasn't like that bad of a lay. But I just didn't know if I could get it over the Great bushes shot. back to the green. Great shot. And I just looked at who was uh, Chad's buddy? Uh, Harrison. I just looked at Harrison and I was like, should I just fucking hit it? And he was like, yeah, just fucking do it. And I just flattened the club face a little bit and just hacked at it and it popped right up, right onto the fringe there. Yeah. And then Two I didn't make that, but I it was a it, that was about how like good did that feel though? You had to make the little oh, that four. Was good. That was a good redemption. See, that's shot. what feels good. You had there's, to make the four footer to win the hole for the team. Well, yeah. up until that point too. I had been playing horrible. Well, hole one I played horrible. Hole two I think I put it on the green. Hole three, like, but but Chad and them didn't know me, so they were like, I don't know if this guy even fucking played golf. And then when they saw me hit they that, they definitely out of the did not think you played I mean, golf. you were wearing a Celtics jersey. <laughs> I was wearing a Celtics jersey. <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing a Celtics and, jersey, and you look like you'd never been in the sun before. Like this is your first day. Hey. I, well, I mean, at skin. that at that point, at that point, I take care of my skin. No, I know it's, it's very. Yeah, but you have a lot. Like you actually had. A, I think you've got a little layer on you now, like sun, sun. Anyway, anyway so, so as we're walking off the green after you make the putt, we all cheer because we needed you to make that. Putt. Well, I look up and I see, I see a the, man. I see a guy yapping on his porch, him to make and he putt. and he goes, "I knew it would be the guy in the Celtics oh, jersey," and I, I was like, "Ah, like put my fist up," and I <laughs> saw Gutsy and I slid in our cart, and then I realized it's Wayne Gretzky, the great one, the great one. And he's sitting there, and I don't even know how we got to that point. I think Gutsy tried to make it about him and I'm, say something about his putt. Oh, yeah. He, he, he did oh, that. Yeah, he oh, did. Yeah, he I'll did. Wait, I'll wait. But, then, I heard but, but then we started talking about the Oilers somehow. I don't even know how that came. Oh, I think I said, like, hey, who do you like tonight in the game? Or are the Oilers going to win? Or maybe you said that. Are they playing tonight? Did you say that? We, we, oh, wait, we don't have that part on camera. We only have the late part on camera, but yes. You're right. Yeah, but then. Because I, I wanted to chirp him about the Panthers. Are we recording? That's what I wanted to do. I'm just kidding. We are? Yeah, but he told us to bet the Oilers in six, seven. 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 Well, in game five, he said if they he, won game five, he bet said him if to they win won the game five, bet them in he game said six just and bet them for the going. series. Yeah, yeah, keep going with them. And if somebody asked who told us, he said his wife. Uh, shout what was out, her name? but yeah, shout out to Jeanette. Janet. 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 Great it's lady. It's not like Jeanette. I. I it's Janet. Can we get a spell check, Jeanette? 
No, it's just Jan. Anyway. I, I don't know. <laughs> it was a great putt in front of the great one. <laughs> two, two, great putts, two great putts in front of the great one. A actual solo shot that I, I drove it into the fairway. No, no, oh, no. wait a minute. Oh, we this is where you make it about drive, you? By the way. This is where you we make used, it about you? We used my drive, by the way. No, on because your team. On your team, you did. On oh, yes, team. on my team. I forgot. You two guys who lost, by the way, right? You guys were on the losing team. That's right. I forgot about that. Oh, but who, beat, the losing team. Actually, oh, but who beat you? On, who beat you individually? I also want to say for the camera, who I had beat two you? eagles. Who beat you? And like two birdies, and I lost. And you still lost. You because I three-putted every other hole on yeah. the entire golf course. I could have shot the fucking course record at Troubadour. That's actually... One one eagle, one net eagle. A net, That's actually... A, a net I eagle. I don't know... That's such a funny story to run back in our heads, though, because Gutsy, who is a massive hockey fan, massive golf guy, Gretzky, his idol, sees me sink a putt that doesn't really matter and says something about me, and Gutsy's like, no, 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 you see what I didn't win? You see what I did, Dad? Now I'll, Dad, Dad, now, Dad. Now, now, now I'll explain how I really went down. Daddy. Now, now he, I'll, he actually now, is so delusional, now, though. He doesn't I'll, remember. Now I'll explain how the story really went and down. Gutsy actually talked. As I, and now, now he, like, represses so, so, a bad memory. So, like, I, no put, Dad saw so me. I put the little white golf ball in the little white hole in three shots, Okay. <laughs> As I'm picking the but ball Daddy and I'm walking off the course, I hear somebody yelling. And I'm like, I didn't even really pay attention at first. I'm still walking back to the car. And then I finally, I'm like, who is fucking talking? And I just look up and I'm like, oh my God. Like, that is Wayne Gretzky. And then he says something. I don't know what he said because I was I was stunned that it was fucking Wayne Gretzky. And I just go, yeah, it's my first birdie at Troubadour. He goes, yeah, I know. I saw it. And somehow, but back to Cooper, my favorite son, DB, <laughs> who is absolutely cooked. And I've actually got another thing to bring up to DB about that specific round that I've waited till today to bring up. Okay, wow. But Wait, uh, what? No, what? I like this. Keep going. Yeah. Why am I being brought into your your? Because your I I told Pat I, mean, I got something to bring up. I told yeah, Pat he, told, he, I told Pat the other day I, go, I got some way yeah. earlier. Like, I'm waiting for the pod to bring it up though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no, no, that's really that's really all Bring that happened. And then, and then he commented that, oh, you said, oh, yeah, you got an eagle. He's like, yeah, it's the guy in the Celtics jersey. And then we talked to him about the Oilers, and I was trying to say, Florida Panthers are going to win because they're the best team I've ever seen in my life. And it was, you know, just, but it was, him, yeah. but it was, it was hard to talk to the great one. It was just cool to see him. Story. So, yes, DB, like he said, he yeah. won the match. Now, there's obviously a lot of holes in how he won this match. I'm not throwing any excuses out there, okay? <laughs> But, but <laughs> yeah, you know, we were playing a shamble. I was hitting every fairway. He was hitting ball. You know, he had like four balls out of bounds, which is fine. That's fine. You know, we were playing shamble. I knew what I was getting myself into, but hole 18 is what I want to go to. That's what I want to look at. The big hole 18. You had a great up and down. A great up and down. Fantastic up and down. Now, that's that's what's in question here because we couldn't find your golf ball, right? We were looking everywhere. Where's Stevie's golf ball? Where's Stevie's golf ball? We did find my golf We did find it. Yeah. But why didn't we find it? What are you talking about? Because that ball was fucking buried. Okay? Ball's buried in the rough. It was like U.S. Open type I rough, chopped right? it out. Yeah, sure. So, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's there's DB's ball right you there. You waited 48 hours to All talk of a sudden, about. I'm, I'm looking over at the ball, and I notice that one guy comes over, and he just picks it up. Oh, DB, your ball. Puts it back down. I'm Chad. like, okay. I didn't say anything about it. I let it go. Who did that? It was then that caddy. It was, it was Harry. I think it was your Harry. teammate. I think oh, it might have been Harry. I'm not. No, no, no. You know who it was? I know who it was. Your now. teammate. It wasn't Harry. It was the. It was, was the it Wayne Gretzky. It was the bomber. Was it Wayne Gretzky? It was the, the new the new guy that added that we added on our team. Your teammate. Yeah, again, uh, your yeah, teammate. Because I actually heard. I actually the reason I turned around is I go. Hopefully, you're my teammate. And so I go. Well, look, dude. I mean, I don't. And then he picked up. So then I see DB walk over there. Then I see DB walk over there, and DB picks the ball up and goes, "Yep, that's my ball." And I think kind of, you know, <laughs> I think you kind of, let me luff this up a little bit. Let me put a T underneath let me that get thing. This, let me get this thing just up just a little bit. Give it a little bit of a huck. <laughs> and then DB, you know, he hit a great shot. I'm not trying to take it away Dude, from him. What was that? That was 18. Was 18. I still had to chop the shit out of that ball. The rough at Troubadour is literally this long. I agree. There's I agree. no oh, way that, to that perch was, it up, bro. Well, yeah. I had to identify the ball. I didn't, I didn't know Harrison even touched the damn thing. So what do you want me to do? What do you think, Pat? 
I mean, you know, see I the whole situation. This sounds like a this sounds like a I real mean, sore I, loser. It, here. it does. It sounds like a sore loser so joke. We want, and again, We're, I'm a team guy. We want our team won. That's all I care about. Yeah, we won. I, and I and I took twenty bucks off Kessler. Easy. I think it's almost time to wrap it up. Yeah, I oh, mean, I have one more story from last year. So okay. I mean, I appreciate you guys coming. This this feels like a yearly thing now. I feel like we we did love this that. about a year I ago. Love that. So, I mean, it's great. I mean, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Um, loved having you last year. You guys went out to Troubadour. We drove back from Indy to meet you guys last year. Just, just because We never met before in person. Yeah, huh? yeah. And we went out to dinner. Oh, dear. Had a great time. <laughs> met up with some other people. I was a little, I'm in a little better shape than I was last year. Every, everyone got a little lit. Everyone got a little lit. Pat, Pat got particularly lit. Pat got burned up. Day, particularly <laughs> lit. We go out after to have a drink. Mm. And we meet up with our buddy, Anthony, who set us up at Troubadour. And so we were like, yo, crazy coincidence. Hey, thank you for setting our boys up. Like, these are our guys. They're golf betting influencers. They're great. Here's DB. DB's like, what's up? Thank you so much. I'm like, here's Pat. <laughs> I'm like, here's Pat. How they're having the Troubadour. <laughs> Sorry, how they're having the tour junkies. And Pat goes, I like boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> and Anthony goes, and just turns around. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that story. That was one of the funniest things. Like, I was crying, I don't dude. Remember that. All the Anthony things. was like, he just didn't even laugh. He was like, hmm. <laughs> of all the things that I could have done, which is a lot. He just goes, I like boobies. <laughs> I, I, am, I am so proud. I'm so proud of myself for that. Kiss my brain. You could have said a lot <laughs> worse. You could have said a lot worse. Kiss my brain for that. <laughs> you could have said a lot worse. Yeah. I think that you did say a lot weird. worse, it's just not in that moment, but you did that <laughs> yeah. night. There's a lot going on up there. Let's I guarantee leave, it. I think it's a good note to leave on. Right <laughs> yeah, there. that's what we're going to leave it on. That was fucking hilarious. <laughs> that's, that's what I knew. You know, we were going to be friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to be friends forever. But, yeah, that's we appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thanks for coming up here. Uh, we all like boobies, just like Pat. <laughs> yeah. I love boobies. <laughs> you I still do. Boobies. After uh, after a year, you still after, do. After all these years, still true. <laughs> boobies still win. Double, <laughs> double down for another year. Double down for another year. Take the boobies. <laughs> I'll take the plus money on boobies. <laughs> and every time. Dude, I'll, I'll, there. I'll lay the juice. Be, I'll lay the juice. Boobies might be plus money. I'll, I'll lay the juice. juice. There's no way they're plus so money. I'll take the alt line. Are boobies yeah. plus money? No. No. <laughs> no. They're, they're, if they are, I'll take them every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. Why every is he single just losing time. his mind? Every <laughs> single Why time. Why is losing his mind right now? <laughs> Oh, Great so story. good. Way to end that. But yeah, <laughs> fellas, hell of a week I live. We got a couple days left. Guys, we'll weave in some content. Love you guys. Thanks for coming on. Oh. Gutsy loss to DB. That's episode four. Sure did. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Dude, I cannot believe. I do not remember that. Was that it? Was that it? Uh, was that it? Tin roof? Yeah, that was it. Tin roof. Yeah. Was that? Was that the first guy? The first group of guys we met on the right side? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, now I remember it. Now it's coming back to me.